Located on the Mississippi River, not far from the Gulf of Mexico, is the New Orleans suburb of Metairie, a tight-knit community that is home to Zeke's, a neighborhood restaurant opened in 2002 by a charismatic entrepreneur named Zeke Ugnast. Zeke was six foot four, big and goofy, but you know what? The man knew how to have a good time, and he knew how to run a pretty good restaurant. Everyone came to Zeke's when it first opened because there was just a good vibe in this place. Good people, food was always good. I mean, we used to do 750 people in here on a Friday night. But in 2005, Zeke tragically died during Hurricane Katrina, and the ownership and the direction of the restaurant was up in the air. After Katrina, this place was in limbo. So the Cortellos bought it, and then they pretty much took on the place. Hi, guys. How are y'all tonight? Welcome to Zeke's. When we bought Zeke's, we chose to keep the name because Zeke's did a very good business, and that just made business sense to us. All right, guys. First guess. When Daryl first took over, pretty much changed everything. He cut staff. He cut product. He went to uh, lesser quality. Wouldn't feed that to your dog. And then on top of that, he raised the prices. It's an expensive It's a little over the top. I feel as though I'm completely handcuffed in the kitchen. Dude, I'd love to do like a steamed clams. That's not us. I don't think that's us. You know what I'm saying? I'm always trying to beg him or plea him. Can we try that? Can we do this? And Daryl doesn't allow it. I'm trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. I ask myself all the time, why do I even stay here? Uh-uh, no sitting on the job. Servers here are all talked down to or disrespected. People just don't feel appreciated. Daryl cut my pay in the last six months. I can't afford raises right now. And it's made me work more hours since he cut my pay. Daryl, we got three orders of green tomatoes left. Cutting them a little thick, too, I tell you that. I'm not looking to squeak by. I'm looking for financial rewards in this business. Can we get a cucumber? The short change. That kind of offended a lot of Zeke's regulars. And this has just steadily declined. Meatballs, plain and bland. Unless he's got a pot of gold stashed somewhere, there's no way this restaurant would last, you know, a month. All right. Payroll was today. How'd we do? <laughs> That's not a good question. Financially, we are not doing great. Well, we got to catch up somewhere. It's not happening. We're not going to make it if we don't have Chef Ramsey come in and tell us what he thinks we can do differently to change this. Because obviously, what we're doing, it's not really working. Physically, emotionally, it's been hard. I have put everything I can possibly put into Zeke's, but seats aren't full, so something's going on, and we're killing ourselves trying to find out. Before heading to Zeke's, Gordon has arranged to meet some Metairie locals to gain some insight into the restaurant and the neighborhood. Oh, doing good. How are we doing this morning? Very well indeed, thank you. Morning. Morning. How are we? Now tell me about the area, Metri. What does it, uh, what does it stand for? So it's a town on the East Bank. Uh-huh. They got a lot of people. They got some good Russian sub there. And have you heard of a restaurant called Zeke's? We used to go there quite a bit. I haven't been there in a while, but before Katrina, we used to go there quite a bit. Before Katrina, we would do like every product, it was great. But after Katrina, we probably only did it once or twice. What's the difference in food? It got pricey and average. Oh, really? Yeah. The quality has gone down quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, the atmosphere wasn't the same. They had lost the magic, the feel of the restaurant. Right, man, just changed. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. After hearing unfavorable reviews, Chef Ramsey heads over to Zeke's to continue his investigation. And there is nothing more telling than lunch. Hello. Well, hello, Chef Ramsey. How are you? Welcome to Zeke's. I'm, I'm very happy to be Patella. here. Nice to meet you. Definitely. Come right this way. All right, guys, I think we got a special guest. Heard that. Heard that. Help me get up to speed. You are the owner. Yeah. You run the business with Zeke? My husband, no, my husband is Daryl. Daryl. And where is he? He is in the kitchen. So who's Zeke? Zeke was the original man who opened the restaurant, um, passed away right after Katrina. Daryl. And we purchased it from his estate, so we've had it for almost five years. What did you change after you bought it? The menu items are similar. Okay, um, good. We've definitely taken some off and changed some recipes. And the chef is the same? Emil is the kitchen Emil. manager, yes. Whose decision is it with the new dishes? So My husband, Daryl. He's got a couple of his recipes on the menu. And where did he train as a chef? He's never trained as a chef. If you're not a chef, why would you put dishes on the menu? Being in the business, I guess. Um, okay. Does the chef agree with those dishes, or is it just because he's the owner, that's why he gets them on? I guess talk to him about it. 
OK, let me have a look at the menu. OK. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Wow. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, I'm so happy to be in Louisiana. My first time. Good. Thank welcome. you. Your first name is? Candice. Candice. I saw on the menu the oyster... Oysters Cortello. It's an invented dish for our restaurant. The Cortellos is Daryl and Ellen, so they made they made it up. So the owners have named an oyster after them? Yes, they have. They bought the restaurant, now you want your name on the menu. Yes. Sounds like someone's struggling for power. <laughs> I've got to try one. OK. Yeah. And I must have some boiled shrimp. Boiled shrimp. And what specials do you have, my darling? We have a chicken fried steak today. Let's go for it. We do have also traditional bread pudding. Let's go for that. And I think we're done. OK. Thank you. Look what I got. All right, here we go. When Daryl got here, he kind of implemented his own menu. It really gets frustrating because Daryl really has no idea, culinary-wise, what he's doing. Candace, you ready? I'm going to take out the boiled chip to him. Chef Ramsay is going to love this food. It's simple food, it's basic food, it's feel-good food, but it's done very well and fresh. OK. Boiled mm. shrimp. Thanks, Tony. My first Louisiana shrimp. Yeah, everything's soft. They should peel easily and sort of pop out the shell, but I'm struggling to peel them. Mm. I mean, that is nasty. What I'm struggling for here is the lack of freshness. They feel and taste slightly mushy, which is a big disappointment. Candice, where are the shrimps fresh? They're fresh frozen. They're fresh frozen. frozen. I know it's kind of an oxymoron. But you can buy fresh shrimp yes. within a mile from Yes, there. yes. The frozen shrimp tastes like shit. Sorry. Crap. <laughs> I wanted to know why we would get frozen shrimp when you can go to, like, the market and get them fresh every day. It's not uncommon to have frozen shrimp because some things are OK frozen. How we look on the oysters? Coming right now. All right. Wow, that back wall is hideous. What a mess. Yeah. You got two seconds, please? Yes. And what's with the, uh, the swamp decor? <laughs> Whose idea was that? Um, mine and my husband's. To eat in a swamp? For children or for adults? For both. For both. For both. Oysters Cortello. That's not worth me. Right, here we go. OK, thank you. All right. What the hell is that? These are the Oysters Cortello. Oysters Cortello. So I suppose you go like that. Wow, they're dreadful. Oysters named after the owner. I certainly wouldn't put my name on that. I wouldn't even put my enemy's name on that. Take it for you? Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. That's depressing, isn't it? No. Just terrible. Oysters Cortello, I don't know what to say about that. I eat them myself. I think they're delicious. Absolutely delicious. Now, what do you say? Oysters Cortello just ain't working. This is killing me not to know what he's saying. This is the fried chicken steak, right? Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Bland as anything. No seasoning, no care. Look at that. Ugh. Candice, what the hell is that? It looks like it's just had a giraffe's tongue cut out and deep fat fried. People complain that the quality of the food here is horrible. Unbelievable. Daryl's not listening to the feedback that he gets and he's going to do what he wants to do. Daryl. Yep. He said that it looks like somebody cut out a giraffe's tongue, battered and fried it. I'm not going to agree with that. It didn't look that way to me. I mean, that's what normally goes out. It's a good product. So it looked like we cut out a giraffe's tongue. Wow, wow, wow. Jesus. Thanks, Tony. Doesn't look fantastic. But it tastes delicious. Who made that? Emil, it makes it. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just so happy that Chef Ramsay likes the bread pudding. It feels great to end on a good note. Love the bread pudding. You like the bread pudding? There we go. Loved it. I took full responsibility for bread pudding. That is all me. Daryl doesn't really have influence on that. Thank God. Thank God he likes some I did. I'll take that any day. Hello. Hello, Chef. And this is Daryl. Daryl. The owner. Yes, chef. Introduce me to your uh, brigade. Chef Emil, Marcos. Emil, Emil good yes, to see you, buddy. Nice to Likewise. Meet you. Jason Carpenter. Second. Jason, good to see you. Chef. There's a lot of things that, that need changing, and you know, Daryl is he's one of them. Can I talk about lunch? Yes. 
My God, what a disaster. And the food is below standard. Why wouldn't you buy fresh shrimp? I simply don't have the time to go to the market. Excuse me? Where are we? We're Come in New on. Orleans. Come on, big boy. Chicken fried steak. Disaster. What cut of meat was that? Not a very good cut. No. Are you proud to serve that food? No, sir. Was that the same quality of steak that we were using years ago? No, sir. Then why have you changed the standard? Uh, it's, it's up to Daryl. Is that a cutting corner method to save no, money? No, no, no. Chef, everything is shit to you. Yeah. But we had diners eating all lunch, full dining room, but nothing <laughs> sent back. Do you honestly think, just because they don't send it back, that your food is fucking amazing? That's good enough for you to continue. No, you can't be that fucking stupid. Point taken. If they want to be that stupid, you've got no chance. I don't buy the fact that it's bad quality food. That's bullshit. Hard to believe this was once a great place. After receiving some harsh words from Chef Ramsay... The food is below standard. Daryl has some words of his own. You know, Chef says everything is shit. It's embarrassing. There's nothing good about the menu. You know, I don't buy that shit. I will never believe the food is shit. You're not going to commit. I've been eating this food all my life. Chef Ramsay he doesn't know where Orleans food. That's it. I mean, you cut all the food down you want. You can't break me. It's an hour before dinner service, and Chef Ramsay hopes a private meeting with the two chefs, Emil and Jason, can shed some light on the restaurant's main issues. OK. So, I don't get it. Some of the things I encountered there today were just awful. That can't be your wish to cook with frozen ingredients. We talk about it every day, and yep. it just gets swept under the table. I tell him the second he starts cutting the cost, you yeah. get a cheaper product. Yeah. You know it's going to taste like shit, and trying to explain that to him, yeah. just like, you know, is like talking, talking to this wall right here. Yeah. And how long has it been going on like that? Since the right around the time he took over. The only thing Daryl and Ellen see is money, and that's what scares me. Their whole purpose is money, 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 money. We feel like our hands are so tied. As far as ordering goes, everything goes. The only other option was to leave. Me and him both go. Yes. Yeah. You know, what do you do? Just walk out the place? I mean, we got a lot of personal memories in this place just to yeah. walk out of it. Granted, I, I get that, but it doesn't stop you from having your voice. Everybody here is just kind of waiting for the place to belly up and go find a new job somewhere else. I'm here to help put this freaking place back on the map. Yes, Correct. sir. You're absolutely right. Yes, sir. We have only two options, Chef Ramsay or God, and I don't think the second coming's happening anytime soon. Thanks for the catch-up. Thank you. Thank you. After gaining some insight from Jason and Emil... Hey, I need shrimp portioned. Chef Ramsay is eager to see how this restaurant functions in a dinner service. Uh, how does this work? Uh, Emil. When were these done? Um, last night. Why are they bagged? He portioned them out to order. Really? What's the idea of putting everything in bags? Portion so, size. Portion size. I like to have everything in quantitative perspective. If I give too much, you get a happy customer here. You don't get a good customer. They're happy because they're getting three times what they should be getting. I'm getting nothing. I don't make money on that. It's food, you know, we're not cutting uh, piping for bathrooms. Hi, welcome to Zeke's. How many do we have in the party? Four. It's Chef Ramsay's first time in Louisiana. Come right this way, please. And not surprisingly, Zeke's is completely booked. And tonight our specials are lasagna and lasagna salad. I got a seafood platter, no oyster sub shrimp. I'm at the expo station. I like to see all the food go out. Side of new potatoes, Daryl. I uh, make sure every dish goes out like I want it to go out. Can I run anything? Nope. Shrimp platter. Can any of that go? I'm waiting on dishes to complete the order. It doesn't concern you that food's just dying in the window? Yeah, but we're pushing as hard as we can. Bloody hell. It's been a long time. For expediting is one thing, standing here and saying nothing is another. Wow, fucking hell. It's an hour into dinner service, and the first wave of food is finally making its way out to the customers. Sorry about the wait. They are backed up. Everybody's food at the table now. Let me get uh, your server. My apologies. And the food isn't the only thing that's getting a chilly reception. Can I ask something? Do you mind not standing there like that? It's so dour. Yeah, I think you can be more proactive. I don't want to hover, you know. But you can make yourself busy. OK, I got it. I'm ready. Good. Thank you. 
All right, look what I got. What's that one? Lasagna. Lasagna. When was the lasagna made? Last Thursday. Last Thursday. And today's Thursday, right? Correct. Serving the stuff from a week ago. Help me to understand that, uh, that stupidity. Well, we made the, made the pan, we didn't sell it all. It's wrapped up in portions and uh, frozen. I thought that's a bad thing. Lasagna, it's all done fresh, cooked. And uh, we'll wrap the portions up separately. We'll put them in the freezer. It works. It is the best lasagna you're going to get. Is this special, right? Yes, it is. OK, so how the fuck is that special in your tiny mind when it was cooked a week ago? I don't have a tiny mind. I'm telling you, you have a tiny mind. It can't be that special if you're going to stand here and tell me that this, it's special. The, the product is good. Daryl runs his kitchen with 90% bravado, and, you know, the other 10%, he just wings it. This is a good product. This is good food. Fuck oh, me. My god. It's getting worse. Yeah, he's a tough nut, your uh, expediter. So we have a special today. When do you think that lasagna was made? Today. Homemade lasagna? Right. Last Thursday. How could it be that special when it's from a week ago? Well, you know, it's frozen, so it's not like sitting there getting mildew on it. And our customers absolutely love the lasagna. I don't think that's our biggest issue, is lasagna. I mean, that's absolutely incorrect. What do you think they would feel like if you told them the day special was cooked a week ago, frozen? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure they would probably be surprised that it was so good and that it was made last week and frozen. Shall I ask them all? Would you like me to walk with you? I know I'm not going to walk. I'm going to stand up and shout. Oh, really? <laughs> when you come out to restaurants and you read today's specials, for instance, a beautiful homemade lasagna, would you expect that lasagna to be made today? Yes! yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have ordered lasagna? How would you feel if I told you all that Today's lasagna that's been served was made a week ago. This is humiliating. After making a shocking discovery about today's special... When was the lasagna made? Last Thursday. Chef Ramsay made an announcement. Today's lasagna that's been served was made a week ago. <laughs> that is not sitting well with customers. My apologies to those that have ordered the lasagna. Have a look at the potential other specials. Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you. This is humiliating. It's absolutely better, of course, when it's fresh and served right out of the pan, but it's not horrible. I've just told the customers that today's lasagna was reheated from a week ago. The feedback was shock horror. 86 of lasagna. Yes, sir. Yeah? With Chef Ramsay's announcement fresh in their minds... Get a, uh, get a check. Get the check, OK. Customers have seemed to have lost their appetite. Fuck oh, me. Did y'all eat already? <laughs> yeah, I had the lasagna. After witnessing a dinner service full of problems... You got two seconds, please? Yes, absolutely. Chef Ramsay is anxious to have a chat with the owners. Oh, dear. Did you hear the customers tonight? I told them lasagna was a week old. Did you hear? Here's what happens. Cook lasagna, and it doesn't sell. Do you throw it away? No, we don't throw it away. We wrap it. I'm here to help, but I tell you what, I can't help you when you're standing there and trying to come up with excuses to why customers pay good money for frozen shit that cooked a week ago, and you call it a special. We don't feel like it puts out an awful product. You don't give a shit about food. It's not true. Your passion's about portion control. Measurements, frozen foods, reheated in a microwave. Russians don't run like this. I disagree. I disagree with that also, definitely. Trust me, you are not a fucking restaurateur. You're the owner? You're paying rent here? When you start dealing with all this crap and your name's on that lease, then you tell me what you want to do. After being stonewalled by owners in denial... Morning. Good morning, sir. Chef Ramsay has called a staff meeting. Two minutes, please. ..hoping to bring all of the restaurant's issues into the open. OK. I want you to tell me the frustrations, the anger, and the things that really upset you the most. 
Emil. Um, I, I just feel as though I'm getting pounded with a mallet constantly when I walk into this place. I went from working 40 hours to working about 50 for $400 a week. That pisses me off. I feel that we don't get any respect. I'm here all the time. I don't get to eat lunch. I should have a meal. I should have a shift meal. This is messed up. We are talked down to like we're dirt. And it's not right. Listen, um, I really appreciate the openness and the honesty. I knew it was bad, but I didn't quite understand it. It hit that um, level of hurt. I think it's just sad that we're all sitting here and that we actually have to even be at this point. I think we all, the whole group of us here, are pretty much struggling. No one's getting that message across. I need to get through to them. Daryl and Ellen are about to arrive. I want you to tell them. Everybody was saying what they wanted to say and getting it off their chest, but it's kind of different from telling Chef Ramsay versus telling Daryl. Don't be nervous. I don't want you to be afraid. I've got your back. OK? And here they are. Good morning. Good morning. morning. I've been here having a staff meeting. Um, we've gone through some issues um, this morning that's been bothering them. But rather than me trying to tell you how they feel, I think they should speak. Certainly. Who's going to go first? I go first. I don't feel as though we all gain much respect around here. And I don't think that you, as our owner, have our back. Candace, Ashley, is that how you feel? You really do talk to us like dirt sometimes. My intent is not to talk down to somebody. But that's how it comes out. Jason, talk to Daryl, please. My biggest problem that I have is just, I don't think you have a clue as to how this place runs. Me? Yeah. Wow. I think that you're so stuck on the numbers the actual essence of having a restaurant and serving good food and giving customer service and happy employees, that, that's gone. I, I don't understand. We hear it every single night and every single day from our customers what needs to be changed and why they don't come back. We let you know these things and you don't give a shit. Nothing is done. You don't care. Wow. Pay, pay is ridiculous here. I really don't want to break down, because I've been here a long time. And I'm not getting paid jack shit. For somebody to be here that long. I've been here since 2006. Why haven't I never got a pay raise? OK, let me say something real quick. Since we're all telling the truth, First of all, Daryl and I have taken thousands and thousands of dollars out of our personal account to pay your paychecks. So why not just close the place down? We're not giving up. We don't want to give up. If you want to give up, that's fine. This isn't I your like business. You. We don't want to leave each other because we all love each other. We don't want to leave. Not at all. But I need to make money to support my family. You know what? So do we. Y'all acting like it's us against y'all, and it's not. This is a business where we have costs and expenses. And I ask you to take that pay cut. It's either that or labor costs get so high, I'm out. But you can go on five vacations in the summer. And you're struggling for money. Right. That is fucked up. Period. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. After Chef Ramsay arranged for the staff to air their grievances, I don't think you have a clue as to how this place runs. The defiant owners are not having any of it. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. If I were piling up money back there, then I could see you being pissed off. But we're not piling up money back there. I can't show appreciation in dollars at this point. 
They maybe have this picture of me with this pile of money going, ha, 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 nobody's going to get it. We don't have the money. I'm accepting the truth from you guys. Accept it from me, please. Things aren't going well, I understand that. But in terms of morale, there's an air of discontent. They feel abused. And I'm not saying the staff are perfect, but you're the owners, and you set an example. We have to fix what's broken within. So how about starting over again and turning the page and the beginning of a new chapter? I understand those frustrations. You are wonderful people. So I want you all here, and you will have my respect. I guarantee that from me. And there's a lot of love for you guys from Ellen and I, and I truly mean that. Good. We did make some progress. The air is clearer. OK, it's a new day here at Zeke's. I've got some ideas that I need to uh, put into place to really start putting this place back on the map. Thank you. Honestly, I don't think that Daryl and Ellen heard what, what we were saying. He was just saying what was right, just to get Chef Ramsey off of his back. We'll see what happens. Oh, Lord. After attempting to open Daryl and Ellen's eyes to the staff morale problems, Chef Ramsey has devised a plan to test the chefs and showcase their abilities. OK, it's been so obvious that you've been handcuffed by Daryl. And here's what I want you to do. Show Daryl how creative, how inspirational, how exciting you can be with seafood. There's a grocery store literally two miles away from here, OK? Have a look at the ingredients, get inspired, come back, get creative. I want to see that on a plate, yeah? Thank you, Chef. Good. Right now, I'm pretty jacked up. Gordon Ramsay himself said, Jason, time for you to be inspired. Go let it happen. Let's see what you got. All right, let's see what they got fresh. How may I help you? Redfish, Redfish. fresh? Yeah, just put it out an hour and a half ago. That's what we're looking for. Okay. It's extremely liberating to have this freedom to showcase and do what we want to do, cook good food. Right, Very nice to meet thanks, you. Thanks, to meet thanks you. guys. I am uh, looking for red onions with uh, asparagus. Just do a red pepper. This will be the last thing I get. I'm ready to rod. There it is. That is. Showcase the skills. So, yeah. happy. Very Think happy. of something creative and really let it go, yeah? Yes, sir. OK, off you go, guys, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to do chicken fried steak at the same time, OK? Brilliant. Own it, yeah? Yes, sir. You're going to put a little lime juice in there? Yes. More yeah, lime just... juice. I'm not done yet with it. OK, good. Yeah, I love the idea of uh, bacon and cheddar. Grits. Cheddar, nice. So in terms of the inspiration, tell me what it is. Try to keep it southern with the grits, fresh with the salmon, and classic with the capers, with the onions, with the tomatoes. Good. Keeping it with the New Orleans theme, red fish, and then grilled vegetables, fresh rice, fresh ingredients. Just a, a fun dish. Pretty good job. The difference is night and day, let me tell you that. Beautiful. Now, you say nothing. You didn't cook them. I cooked them. Do you understand? Yes. OK, let's go. Come over, guys. Please. Wow, look at that. You think of Louisiana, first thing you think of is freshness. But when I walked into your restaurant, what I didn't expect was frozen seafood. So I got my team to get some ingredients for me. It's like you both just have a little taste. Taste the freshness. A beautiful char grilled salmon done with grits. Creamy, tasty, it's absolutely phenomenal. Then I got hold of some uh, redfish, marinated zucchini with some rice and a really nice mango salsa. Mm. Oh my gosh, this redfish is delicious. It's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's phenomenal? Delicious. Absolutely. Yeah. Watching them eat my dish and not knowing that it was mine, and to say that, you know, it looked like it was from their heart. I'd like you to have a little taste of that chicken fried steak. I just lightly pounded it and then fried it twice. So it should just melt in your mouth. It does melt. Yeah. Literally. Literally melted, Jeff. And couldn't believe how good it was. The presentation was beautiful, and it was fresh yeah. ingredients, and they tasted wonderful. They're all absolutely phenomenal. And you taste the difference? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. There's something you need to know about the seafood dishes. I didn't cook them. The two chefs put those dishes together. Wow. The seafood dishes mm -hmm. are your boys. Delicious. Absolutely. Wow. Phenom they really are. They're phenomenal. It really opened my eyes to what I, I, I wasn't letting them do, honestly. Food is art. And I was not letting them create their art. These aren't just delicious. They're beautiful, and they come from right inside you. I know that. You did a fantastic job. It feels really good that Daryl and Ellen recognize my potential, and I think that my abilities have been shown. And hopefully, this is the first step forward. This is the new Zeke's. I can see that's what we're looking for. And all I could really think to myself was, 
About fucking time you see it. Really good job. Well done. It's incredible. After finally having at least a small breakthrough with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to have his team work through the night on the biggest restaurant makeover they have ever done. Right, good morning. Morning, Chef. Excited? Are you ready to see the new Zeeks? Yes. yes. Let's go. Welcome to the new Zeeks. Here we go. Oh, Come wow. in, please. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? In, in, oh. in. Oh, nice. Oh, oh man, that's my it. gosh. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Look at that. Oh, my God. Let's start with the walls. Gone is the swamp. Look at all the, the, all the old doors. Reclaimed doors. It's got that nostalgia. And it's got that comfort feel, right? Like home. Home. Look at this. You've got the most amazing chairs, brand new chairs. It just feels authentic. Let me say this, please. please. You have found our identity. Wonderful. This is Wonderful. us. I'm astonished. I mean, truly. I didn't really have any expectations, but this has surpassed anything I could possibly imagine. There is one more thing I'd like to show you. <laughs> You're gonna start peeing your pants. Oh, oh yeah, man, that's it. Oh, that's it. There we are, our boil house. Oh my gosh! From shucking your oysters to cooking your shrimp, this is gonna be a substantial part of the menu. And Emil, it's gonna take so much pressure off you and Jason. This should just run on its own, and it should almost double the turnover. Did I see you smile again? That's the second time in 24 hours, uh -huh. dude. Huh? They're going to arrest you for being too happy. <laughs> Jeff Ramsey has given this staff, this place, my family, our friends, our customers, a new beginning. It's unbelievable. Honestly, when people would ask me where I work, I would never say Zeke's. I just say I'm a cook. Mm -hmm. Now I, I'm, I'm proud to say that I work here. A new beginning and a new identity for Zeke's. Along with making the decor more inviting, Jeff Ramsey has replaced Zeke's outdated, stale menu with a modern update of classic New Orleans cuisine. Oh, my gosh. My goodness me. This is going to put Zeke's back on the map. Smell it. Be careful. It's fresh. <laughs> Every dish is absolutely beautiful. OK, let's start off top of the table. Zeke's house boil, yes. Bucket of shrimps, yes. Bucket of blue crabs. A great sharing, festive, localized bucket. Push them, OK? Back of the menu, the entrees. Pecan crusted catfish, served with a classic tartar sauce and a herb salad. Country fried steak, big hit. Say no more, such a gravy. Delicious, slightly heated in that gravy. So you've got that nice little burn at the back of your throat. Blackened alligator, wonderful Creole sauce. Absolutely delicious. Because this has now become not the old Zeke's, your Zeke's. Thank Zeke. you. You've got your identity. Now make it yours. Absolutely incredible. Beautiful. Come here. Oh, thank huh? you. Come here. The way Chef created the menu and the dishes, uh, they don't have a menu like that around here. Dig in. Enjoy. So not only do we have something great to put on the table, but it's not anywhere around. Nobody else has it. Oh, my God. Did you taste the cornbread? The menu is phenomenal. I'm proud to have it and excited and can't wait for everybody else to come in and try it. It's oh, delicious. I feel right now we have the most diverse Louisiana Southern menu. I mean, we very well may have the best menu. Rich in flavor, rich in texture. Wow. Hi, guys. Welcome to Zeke's. The community of Metairie had a love affair with this restaurant that went sour. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Shrimps are amazing. Chef Ramsay's revamp and tonight's relaunch will be a strong indicator if it's possible for this love affair to resume. I'm going to try to smother it. I'm going to try the black and alligator. And with so many changes in place and so many people in the dining room, Chef Ramsay is hoping the boil house will take some of the pressure off the kitchen. Any, uh, any orders on yet in the boil house? No. Nothing in the boil house already. So get hold of the waitresses, call them in and say, right, start pushing them. And we've got to use that place. We've got to get used to that. Let's go. Great. Sell boil food. I'm, I'm Sell trying. one, OK? Sell one to a big table, please. Tonight we have a um, special. It's boiled lobster for two. I don't know if you saw it on the menu, but sell it by the bucket. Just bring us two to the camera right up. <laughs> Two buckets of lobster for table five. Two buckets, yeah, of, get lobster. Two buckets of lobster, please. Let's go. Put a little bit of butter on there. Give it a nice little glaze, okay? Good. That's it. Two lobsters. Let's go. Look what I have for y'all. Y'all enjoy. Looks good. Look at this. Wow. With the boil house now being utilized good. and satisfying customers, good. it's clearly allowed some breathing room for the kitchen. You're eight minutes on bait crab at 33. However, it's now up to Daryl to manage the time wisely. I worked hard today. Let's make it happen. 
You've got to focus on that window. Communicate with these guys. One table leaving, one table working, so we don't get bumped down, yes? Yes, Chef. I need an alligator. I need a strip. Give me three minutes on that. Let's go. We need to push food up there and cook it as fast as we can. Green tomatoes, chocolate ices. I need it fast. Let's work one at a time. It's not a race. How are we looking? Three chops and alligator. Hold on one second, Daryl. Smother chop. How are we looking? Daryl, slow down for one minute. Let us catch up, huh? Fucking hell. Now. With Daryl calling multiple tickets at the same time. Grits, mash, sweet potatoes. And more focused on speed than anything else. What ticket is it for? The kitchen is now completely confused. How's my pecan catfish? Where's my New York strip? Gotta go. Just put them in the window and we'll figure out how to plate them. Yes, whatever you got. Make sure it's done, huh? I was being told that I need this, this, and this right now, and I just try and move as fast as I can and get the food out. See, it just looks like crap. Do you agree? Yeah. No garnish? No, goes in the window like that. Daryl has managed to get the cooks producing the food at a much quicker pace. Thank you. That looks really good. I don't think this is good. But the dishes are not at the level that they should be. So is that is that cooked? It's not, is it? Excuse me. Can I get you another one, sir? Sure. Yeah. Guys, the fish is raw. Not tonight. Oh, just, man. just stop. Twenty-four is out. Everybody, stop. What a joke. It's relaunch night at Zeke's. Mother Chop, how we like it? Daryl, slow down for one minute. Let us catch up, huh? And with Daryl pushing the cooks, food is leaving the kitchen quickly. Can I get you another one, sir? Sure. Unfortunately, it's also coming back quickly. Guys, the fish is raw. Not tonight. Oh, man. Just stop. Everybody stop. I'm here. Jason, come around. I'd rather be three, four minutes later than rush food out there and the shit's coming back. Not tonight. An expediter should definitely set the tone for the rest of the kitchen. I think Daryl lost control of that. Uh, it's just a big catastrophe. What we've got to do is focus on one table at a time. We've got to communicate. Daryl, talk to me. Don't get swamped. Where you at? Daryl, what table are you on? Daryl, take responsibility. I have to stop, refocus. Let's get these tickets out one at a time. I need to do a better job of communicating, very simply. All right, guys, let's focus. Where you at now, Daryl? Pecan, catfish, and black and alligator. In his hand, Daryl. Table one. Let's go. Move to the next ticket. I got 33, black and alligator, pecan, catfish. Coming right now, Daryl. Let's go. Following Chef Ramsay's advice of focusing on one table at a time. What table are you right. on? Table 10, yeah, Maggie I got cheese, I got, up. Daryl and the chefs are now in sync. Please, let's get this to uh, 31. Black and alligator. Awesome. Thank you. Perfectly cooked dishes are leaving the kitchen. That's very really good. And are being enjoyed by thrilled customers. That's delicious. Good. Awesome. Folks, are here. Now that this restaurant is on its way to a successful relaunch, Hi. Chef Ramsay is ready to spread the word. What happened with the restaurant before? Why did you come here? Uh, this place was legendary. Um, it lost its weight. It's now back on the map. And two new owners that are going to start their own beginning of a new chapter. What is the feedback you're already getting for tonight? That the food is fantastic. I mean, the menu's, it's fabulous. I highly recommend that you come in and try it. Let's finish, let's finish. Somebody get this to 14, please. Yeah, no more tickets coming in. Let's get this stuff out of here. Well, definitely that's gorgeous. That's yeah. delicious. That's a wrap, Jack. The end of the night, the way it ended made you feel good. I think Daryl showed more personality tonight than he showed in the last few years. We still have some improvements to make but you can see it's on the right track. Nice job. Good night, ladies. Thank night. you. Thank you so much. OK. Tonight was about establishing a new Zeke's. And you achieved it. Yes, Great. yes. For my first time in New Orleans, fuck me, did you give me a challenge. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> If Chef Ramsay told me a week ago that all these changes were going to happen... Why don't I, darling? I don't think I would have really believed it. Can I just have a quick word with you two? Amazing. Look at this place. The potential is huge. I know. Fantastic. It's now your Zeke's. Run with it. And Daryl, you do care. And you do have a heart, a big heart. Show it to your staff. Indeed, I will. Don't, don't hide that. I'm ready to do things the right way. Ready to get moving. It's a new, it's a new life. It's new energy. Good job. Thank you. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. <sighs> we had a lot of issues here when I first arrived. The staff were at war with the owners. The food was miserable, and the restaurant was seriously struggling for an identity. 
but what I witnessed was a phenomenal comeback. And how fitting is that that it took place here in the most resilient city across America, New Orleans. Week old lasagna, not so special. In the weeks that followed, a glowing report on the local news. As a family, as a restaurant, it's back on the map. Brought a surge of customers to the restaurant. Hi, how are y'all? Daryl and Ellen are doing their best to raise staff morale. You all did an excellent job. I can't do this without you guys. And are reaching out to the community. And we really thank you all for coming here. It means a lot to us. Thanks. But Zeke's back on the map. Ventura Boulevard, one of LA's top destinations for shopping and dining. On this famed street is a landmark restaurant called La Frite, a bistro owned by French immigrant Andre Remillion. La Frite opened in 1972. We were the only French restaurant on the boulevard. Right this way. It was always busy, even at 12 o'clock at midnight, we were packed. After years of success, Andre's son Alex was eager to join his father at La Frite. I was looking forward to my dad and myself making this restaurant work for the next 15, 20, 30 years. But two years ago, Andre's daughter Celine decided she also wanted in on the family business. Alex, do you care this going out like this, the soupy? You're the boss. I know my brother's not happy that I'm here. I know he wishes that he could, could just keep going the way he was going. I think that this restaurant has so much more potential than it's already had. And I really felt like it could really make a difference here. I haven't eaten much. I can make this at home, not in a good way. The food is mediocre at best. What do you need? I've been cooking at La Frite for about 19 years. I'm responsible 100% for everything that's in the kitchen. I don't think the menu is, uh, is, there is nothing wrong with it. Onion soup is bitter. Onion soup is bitter? Martini is a Napoleon complex. Just give me the number table. He's a little man with a big mouth. Ah. I've watched the food just slowly kind of go down and down and down. Souffle is coming back to Eggie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've made my comments. I can't tell anybody anything. Um, Alex? Just. I either get argued with or I get told no. Oh, good old Celine. Wow. Alex, he's a little lackadaisical sometimes. <laughs> he resents Celine. I'm not the manager tonight. He feels slighted. He feels shunned. My brother and I used to get along really, really well, and we were very close. But the restaurants hurt our relationship pretty bad. I don't hate Alex. He hates you. I know he does. It's really difficult for me because I'm the one who has to be the, the buffer for both of them, and I wish sometimes they can understand each other. It's so quiet in here. The numbers just cut down to a third of what we were doing before. Now we are dead by 9 o'clock. Hey, we only did about 20 covers tonight. It's going to be tough. I need Chef Ramsey to come in because someone needs to say, hey, look, this is what's affecting your business. Yeah, it's slowing down, but why do we need to change things when it has been working for such and such amount of years? We're losing money, and uh, it's time for my kids to take over. And if they can't work together, just have to close the door. Before Chef Ramsay makes the six-mile drive from his LA restaurant to the free, owner Andre Remillion is anxious to meet with him privately. How are you today? All right. I'm Welcome to Gordon Ramsay. Chef uh, Ramsay. To give Chef Ramsay a quick briefing into the problems of his restaurant. Excuse me two seconds. Hi. Chef Hi. Ramsay. How are you? Hi, my name is Andre. Andre, good to see you. I want to talk to you about the problem I okay. have with my business. Uh, first of all, in terms of the business, it's been there for how long? The business has been over there for 38 years. Wow. It's been good to me until you... recently I'm starting to back up and I want my daughter, my son to take over. Oh, so you're passing it to them? I'm trying to. And who are they? Alex. Alex. is my boy. Okay. The older one and selling a sister. So what is the number one problem with the restaurants? I think it's mostly the communication right. between my daughter, my son, but they somehow it's a big clash. Celine went and tried on her own business and didn't really work out. So she came back and worked for me. When she came back, Alex didn't want Celine to come back because he right. saw the he owned the place. 
they, they never really work together. And it's really difficult to, to find a solution. It's getting to a point where I can really handle the conflict of personality. And I hope Chef Renzi can help. Thank you for coming okay. over. It would yeah? be great. Okay. Thank you. Secretary Bay. Nice to meet you. See you shortly. OK. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Nice I'm to good. see you. And I'm first name is? Gail. I'm the manager. OK, great. How long have you been here? 20 years. 20 years here. 20 years. Wow, wow, wow. What's that monstrosity in the middle there? That's that. our dessert case. It's what? Your dessert case? Is there a problem with the kitchen, or does it always stay here? It's been here for 20 years that I know of. So it came when you came? Wow. What is this? That's our dessert tray. Holy crap. Did someone drop it? They could have. <laughs> How long has that brick been sat there? That's our homemade bread pudding. That's been there, I think, longer than you've been yeah, here. Huh? Well, they don't, yeah, you're right. Yeah, OK. Ugh. Chef Ramsay's right about the dessert case. I think it should be out of here. Right, where would you like me to sit, here? Yes, sir. I've been trying to get it out ever since I've been here. Can you hear the noise of that thing in the motor? Yes. Who I wants to come know. out to a restaurant and sit next to a fridge? Constant buzz. Um, is Andre around? Would you like to see Andre? Uh, yes, please, yeah. OK. Thank you. Good nice to see you. Likewise, you. good to see you too. Mm -hmm. Dessert fridge is a disaster. Andre? Yes? Chef Ramsay would like to see you. Yeah. The colour's ghastly. Garland, how are you? Hi. How are you? Hi. Right. Yeah, good to see you again. My Hi. daughter. How are you? I'm Celine. Celine, nice Celine to good meet to see you. you. Likewise. She's going to take care of you. OK, brilliant. Gordon coming here was pretty much my idea. You're going to look at the menu for a minute? Absolutely, definitely. I'll be right back. Thank you, Celine. Because it's really become a big pointing finger match of it's so-and-so's fault. Oh, it's so-and-so's fault. But nobody's taking responsibility for the problem. I'm back. Do you have any questions for right now? Um, what quiche would you recommend? I prefer the Lorraine. That's something we're known for. Let's do the Lorraine. The Lorraine. And then I'll start with fruit salad and then the seafood crepe. Not a problem. Thank you. Guys, this table that's coming in right now is for Gordon. Seafood I'll take the La Frite salad to him. Chef Renzi would like the food because all my food is good. How much dressing would you like? The usual amount, thanks. I'm going about three quarters to start. And inside the salad, we've got. Inside romaine. the salad is the romaine, the, um, the walnuts, and you've got your blue cheese as well. And that's one portion. It's massive. Salads are large, and it's usually good as an entree. Enjoy. Thank you. Wow. It's bland. The vinegar dressing is so confusing. The um, vinegar dressing is so strong, just overpowering. Are you through with the salad? Uh, yeah, I am, yeah. Can I clear it? so acidic. Yep. I already know. Did you mention to the chef? Yeah, I, no one listens to me. You knew it was wrong. You told them, but no one's listening to you. Sorry, my life. But why is that? <laughs> Martin doesn't listen to me, and he has an issue taking anything from a female. There's okay. a chauvinistic stance? Yes. Yeah. Some of it. It's absurd. I that understand that. Disgusting. I'll let him know. Thank you. I am embarrassed by the food. I just think that it can all be improved immensely. Martin, your vinaigrette is too vinegary, OK? You know, what is wrong with it? Because uh, we've been running this food for our many years. Martin, you heard me, right? I'm just letting you guys know what he's saying, OK? Thank you, This is going to be the seafood crepe. I'm going to set that in front of you here. It looks like a pie. Basically, they take the dish, they line it with the with the crepes, they fill it with the items, fold it back, and then they bake it. They're not like your typical French crepe. But why would you call it a crepe if it's not really any crepe? I think when the seafood crepe comes out, it just looks like a slurpy mess of black. Can I have a word with your uh, big brother? Is he here or not? He's unfortunately not. He will be here for dinner service tonight. OK. All right, okay. enjoy. Thank you. OK. Oh. That is hideous. It's, it's, it's hot in parts, like in the middle, but on the side there, stone cold. Want me to take it? Is the oven not working? No, the oven's working fine. Can't serve this shit and expect customers to flood through the door. I understand. How long has he been here? The Martine? Oh. Too long. 
You're not wrong there. <laughs> Martin lost his mojo around here many years ago. If you got someone who doesn't care about the food they're putting out, what do you have? Martin, he said it's hot in the middle, it's cold on the sides. He doesn't like it. Thank you. Oh, shit. How long's that been under the grill? Because it looks like it's been overcooked. It's piping hot. Is he microwaving that? I don't know, girl. Yes. When normally something's that piping hot like that, it always tells you that it's been microwaved. Can you just check with the chef? OK, I'll check. Listen, thank you. OK, Martin. The quiche's warmed in the oven. Yeah. Hasn't seen the microwave. No. No. OK. Chef. Um, quiche? No microwave. I asked him if he put it in. He said no. Yeah, well, hold on a minute. I'm convinced this has been microwaved. Look at it. It's congealed. It's just like a, a, a rubber puck. Sometimes, if he gets a little backed up, I, I've seen him do it before. Backed up? This is ridiculous. And let's go and uh, meet Martine. Please. It's a food issue right now. It starts from the kitchen. If we had somebody in here who cared about the food, we'd be so much better than we are now. Martin, I want you to meet <laughs> Chef Ramsey. Come around, please. You're the head chef. And everything I ate for lunch, you cooked. Yes, sir. Lunch was a disaster. The quiche was rancid. Where did you heat that up? Was that in the microwave? Oven. No, I disagree. OK. We started on the microwave, and then uh, we put it on the oven, yes. So it did go in the microwave? That is right, yes. But you just told me it wasn't in the microwave. Why do you want to lie to me? Do you want, do you want me to lie to you? I'm not lying to you. I'm just telling you how do I do it. I'm, I'm so amazed that you're so laid back and, like, you don't give a shit. Talk to me. What do you want me to say? Why don't you care? Is it because you hate Celine? What does that have to do with cooking, sir? Because she said to me in the dining room, every time she tries to tell you something, bang, no, you jump will, down her. She will come and attack me. Attack yes. you? Yes, sir. Like saying that I'm me here for too long, it's time for me to go. If you're not prepared to change, yeah, I think she's right. OK. She's if it great. is time for me to go, I go. That was easy. Martin. After Chef Ramsay's miserable lunch. That is hideous. Lunch was a disaster. Chef Martin is not interested in hearing any criticism. If it is time for me to go, I go. And is ready to say goodbye to Lafrit. Martin. The blame is, is putting on me. That's why I feel like I've been attacked. Martin, talk to me. She just don't understand how much of the stress and pressure I've been under that I'm burning out. I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm burning, I'm... Well, tell me. Do you know how much stress is when I know that I had to work with her? And I cannot work like that. I feel burned out. Celine, you know, is overpowered. Her, you know, authority is a boss, and there's nothing I can do. Even the own brother runs away from her. Like, you know, he doesn't want to deal with her. That's not right. Martin, now I've got your side of the story. Tonight, I want to see how you cook on a busy night service, OK? I'll see you later. Jeez. It's 30 minutes before dinner service, and Celine's brother, Alex, What's up, you hey, guys? Baby. arrives to begin his shift. Any updates? Gordon didn't make me cry. He was actually nice to me. Uh-huh. That's nice. Um, tonight will be fun. Chef Ramsay's going to be coming into this restaurant, changing things. So do I feel resistant? Definitely. Guys, look alive. Gordon's coming in now. Good evening. Hey. Well, hello. How are you? How are you doing, Chef Ramsay? Uh, Gordon. Alex. Alex, good to see you. So you're the big brother? Yeah. The Excellent. Big Little sis, big brother. Yeah. Uh, where's dad? Dad, uh, you know what? Hockey game tonight. He's what? He's gone to a hockey game. Wow, OK. So, um, two minutes with you, I'll catch up. So. All right. So why weren't you here at uh, lunchtime? Um, you're part owner of this business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you've never worked with your sister? Uh, no, we work separate nights. Absolutely. Right. 
Your father came to see me this morning. Oh, okay. To tell me the conflict about you two not working together. Mm -hmm. So why is there so much conflict in here? I think the real conflict is the the who wants to control and what what you know wants to control yeah. things. Are you pissed that she's come to run the business? She shouldn't even be here. I would rather her not be here. But it's your little sis, wouldn't you be stronger and better with a No. <sighs> Unfortunately not. So what's wrong with this restaurant in your mind? Mmm. I don't see anything wrong with it, so... You don't see anything wrong? There's not a problem with this restaurant anywhere? You know, I would change the bathrooms, I would change the different physical... Wow. Know. I'm not here to make you look stupid. Right. But you're sounding ridiculous. Let yeah. me ask you again, what the fuck's wrong with the restaurant? Um... In your eyes, there's nothing much wrong with it. Well, let's go. We'll, we'll see. OK. Well, thanks for the insight. Yeah, absolutely. Aye, aye, aye. If he's not going to be willing to accept this and move on and take it as constructive criticism, it's not going to work. All right, you guys, we ready? Hello there. While Andre is at the hockey game... Hi, ladies. Hi. How are you? His two children, Celine and Alex, are working a rare night together which is good because the restaurant is packed as word has spread that Chef Ramsay is at La Freite. I'm gonna have the chopped salad. And you're doing the lamb special? Okay, uh, necesito tres special, three working, three. I'm proud to be doing the cooking because I know what I'm doing. Excuse me, when you put things on the grill there, you don't season it, salt, pepper on... Yeah, it's already pre-seasoned. There's nothing on there. Right now? Yeah, what do you mean right now? When were you gonna season them then? Yeah, right now. Right now. OK, now. No seasoning on there. They now, should, I think they, don't they salt and pepper it when they put it on the grill? Yeah, they're not. They're not. Martin. Martin. Martin and I have never gotten along. He ignores me. I don't get answers. Alex can talk to Martin, but Martin does not like hearing anything from me. What is that? That's quiche, but it's been overcooked. You're kidding me. They don't listen to my opinions because it's me. Martin. Yeah, talk to me. Yeah, come round, please. I am talking to you. Yes, sir. Are you serious? OK, one more coming up. I just said to Martin, would you come round for a minute? He's serving that up. Yeah, I love it. You don't walk away and ignore me, right? Alex has never taken confrontation well. You, know, you try and talk to him about something, and he just walks away. Are you joking around, or are you normally like this? You've just sort of given up. Have you given up? I have not given up. Absolutely not. We're, We're walking around with a big it's bravado. It's wonderful. Uh -huh. Wow. This is the most disorganised restaurant I've ever seen. Martin, the chef, he's burnt out. Alex, well, he's so laid back, he's almost comatose. Andre, the owner who makes all the decisions, he's at a freaking hockey game. And the only one who cares, Celine, everybody ignores her. Unbelievable. Oh, by the way, the food sucks. Unreal. It's chewy and the sauce is just gooey. The lamb has got, like, no flavor. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Uh... They said the lamb has no flavor. Yep. OK. I know why it doesn't. We didn't salt and pepper it. They're not even seasoning it? Bring on the menu. Let Alex know what table it is, please. Alex, well, yes. that's just coming back now. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks a lot. Uh, is this normal that he doesn't care? Mm-hmm. Celine, you know what? This is really, this is going to fuck up no, everything. You better get a grip. I can't get in the middle. And it's really sad. We've been running the restaurant for 38 years, and things don't need to change. You're not real. That hurts. I love my brother, and I know he's better than what he's doing here right now. And I wish he would realize that everybody's here to help. Otherwise, uh, Alex will ruin me. Alex, look at me. Don't bully your sister. Bully me. I'm not bullying anybody, Gordon. Take a bit of responsibility. I am. Wow. What a fucking sponge. This is destroying us. What a shit attitude.
It's only an hour into a shaky dinner service. This is gonna fuck up everything. You better get a grip. And Chef Ramsay is frustrated with Alex's arrogance. Alex, I, I can't, I'm not gonna get in the middle. As for Celine, <laughs> she is clearly feeling the resentment from her brother. What a shit attitude. You think I did this to set him up? Stop crying. I'm trying so hard. Stop crying. The anger, I can see the anger. It's gotta come out now. I understand. Yeah. Y'all have to do I just, it. You have to work together. You have to get along. Sure. Every day is a fight. What am I supposed to do? I can't keep going. And I feel like I'm the only one fighting. So everybody looks at me like I'm the bitch. I'm the one who's fighting. He's gonna hate me even more for this. It's fine. It doesn't matter. I don't even think that anyone knows how much I care. I think the man's here to work it out with you. I just move on. I take a breath and push through it. That's it. There's nothing else I can do. Can you call your dad? Can, I, can, can you get your dad on the phone and I get him try here? Would you? To urgently? get him here? Please, yeah. I'm ready to go. And tell him it's urgent. I will. And if he can't be bothered to get his ass over here to look at the mess that he's left, I'm out of here. Hi. Papa, you need to see this right now. A lot of food's coming back, you know, and just Alex is really just kind of just nonchalant about the whole thing, and it's really kind of pissing Gordon off. He, the same attitude he always takes, Papa. You know exactly, you know? OK, bye. Andre, you've got two seconds. Unbelievable. First of all, I'm slightly concerned you weren't even here. This is much, much worse than I could ever imagine. The worst thing of all is Alex's attitude. He has an attitude with you, or what? With me? He has an attitude with himself. Why is he so arrogant? It's a problem with him not accepting his sister. And I suffer, you know, a lot because of that. You know, they can't work together. It's a fire. He hates her uh, being anywhere near him in the restaurant whilst they're avoiding each other. Oh, yeah. And doing their separate and things. Bad. The kitchen is diving. It's sinking quicker than the Titanic. What's the solution? You can't leave it all to me. And I can't help you unless you start helping yourself. I'll see you in the morning. Bon nuit. After a long night of contemplating Lafrit's main issue. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. Chef Ramsay is focused on bringing this family back together. I can't begin to fix this restaurant because there's so many personal problems here. Because nobody's opening up in front of each other, I want to try something. So I just want you to bear with me. Come with me two seconds. OK. Please. Take a seat. I want you to sit here, watch and listen. What's happening between Celine and Alex? Don't leave this space. I'm going to talk to Celine. How are you? Good, how are you? Well, good to see no, you. Yeah, uh, darling, take a seat. Let's just have a catch up. Okay. That was tough. Tough night last night. This restaurant has been running for 38 years. But the legacy is not going to continue with this kind of attitude. Yeah. The fragmented relationships between the families is incredible. You and Alex are so disconnected. How did it get to where it is today? Communication broke down. But underneath all that, deep down inside, do you think Alex resents you? I know Alex resents me. Tell me why. I think that he feels like he's the older brother and that he thought it, this was his. He thought that he was going to be able to run it the way he wanted. and his world came crashing down. Your relationship with your father, is it different to the relationship he has with Alex? Yeah. I think that he thinks that my dad, in the end, loves me more for some reason. Hi. Hi. How are you? Very good. Sit down. Good. We were just talking about you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why don't you just explain to Alex what you just explained to me? So we used to be very close. But I think that you're bitter towards a lot of things. You've got a lot of resentment. 
I don't know if it's only towards me, if it's towards other things. I didn't see you wanting to, to come here. It felt like he was going to give you the restaurant. I felt like, you know, I was losing mm -hmm. not only the passion and the pride, but the, the whole aspect of the restaurant. I still have that uneasy feeling like, do I belong? I put that wall up. Yes, I did. I can't do it. I've said it a million times. I can't do it alone. You know that. You know that. I'm not here to hurt you. No. I'm not. Well, I'm not here to step on you in any way. It was the first time that I got to look at you in the eyes and known that you're serious about it. The separation between my sister and I definitely wasn't working, and she made me, you know, realize we need to get unionized and we need to get together with each other and, and work together. I want to do it with you. you. Yeah. I love her, and if, of course we're going to work together. It's good to hear because I don't. I really thought you hated me. For I think she needs a hug. You're a big brother, for God's sake. We gotta figure out just a way to talk again. We used to talk. We used to. <laughs> we used to have fun. <laughs> we, used to, we used to be best friends. This feels incredible. It's the most important thing for the restaurant that my brother and I to be family for, for us to get along, for us to love each other. Let me leave you guys for a couple of minutes on your own. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, let me get some Thank fresh you. air. The walls kind of came down, which is exactly what needed to happen for this family. She definitely showed me that we need to respect each other and that, that the respect for each other is what's going to make Lafrite succeed. If we can continue the legacy and continue the heartbeat of Lafrite, You've got an amazing son and daughter there that are desperate to get this place right. Huh? I also. That's one thing I really want, is us three to communicate or talk to each other. And, you know, it was hurting me. It's one step at a time. Yeah, that's it. Oh. <laughs> I do. I was watching the old. <laughs> I love you. Every time we were meeting, it was a wall. You were not talking to each other. Both of you are going to have to work with each other and listen. All three of us are in charge, and we should sit down any time we have a decision. We need to go one way where everybody work together. We have seen a, a big step on the communication. I just open, cross my finger, and it's going to hold. After a breakthrough, emotional meeting between Alex and Celine. I love her, and if, of course we're going to work together. Chef Ramsay is now ready to start implementing some changes. Gone is the 20-year-old dessert case that sat in the middle of the dining room. Oh, Jesus. And in its place, a contemporary crepe station. There you go. Real crepe. We could start doing some crepes. For tonight's menu, Chef Ramsay is replacing the soggy, heavy casserole crepes yeah. with fresh, light, traditional crepes. Try that. It's excellent. Yeah? It's really good. It'll be our first table tonight. Thanks. Best table in the house. Tonight, Alex will once again be in charge of the front of the house, but he will also be supervising the new crepe station and will be assisted by Gail. A little fresh dill on it. I'm not burning And then it. start to look. As for Celine, she will be in the kitchen, expediting and working alongside Chef Martin. Martin, you and I are going to really need to chat. I'm going to go completely off the specials. Oh, Sounds good. The smoked salmon crepe? Yeah. OK, is it all up? What is that? It's an omelet. You want it again? You tell me. Can he not cook an omelet? He should be able to. Can I get two new ones? Is anybody listening? Yes. 
Okay, I'm ready for the cordon bleu. Martin, try to communicate, please. Right here. What is that? Cordon bleu? Look at that, it's a fucking diaper sandwich. Andre, Martin, just stop and come round. Look at me, look at me in the eyes. Look, I can't serve that. What's that? It shouldn't be like that. Look at the fucking oil slick. Come on, guys. Papa, will you tell him? We don't drown it in there. Yeah, OK. He's going to have to learn. He has to let it drain. My nine-year-old daughter can cook better than that. Martin. Yes. I just want you to care. Yeah, I, I got that. Fuck it, I'm struggling. Where's the rest of our food? Just a little communication, trying to, trying to get everything fired. Who's making the crop the show? While the kitchen struggles to push out food, here you go. Thank you, Celine. Customers who ordered the crepes are thrilled with what they are receiving. It looks fabulous. Absolutely awesome. As for the old menu, it's disappointment. After disappointment. I'm so sorry. I, the artichoke, it's droopy. It doesn't have any flavor. Did you want anything else instead? Just, uh, no, no, we'll just go to the main course. Thank right. you so much. We've got uh, two hot artichokes coming back. No good. What? Salty or? They said they're old and they don't like them. It's disheartening to see how much food was wasted time. I literally feel like we are, you know, back to square one. So. We we'll just get a little bit organized. So I want to see you step up to the plate, yeah? But they're not listening to me. Last night you were the only voice of reason I could actually understand. So they gotta yeah. listen. Got it. You understand? Communication's off the essence, guys. How many minutes out are we on table 19? In the kitchen, Chef Martine continues to ignore Celine. Flip that baby. But in the dining room, Alex is a new man. Pretty darn good, huh? I'm getting my routine here. He's energetic and working hard to satisfy customers any way he can. Ham and cheese. Including making delicious, satisfying crepes. So yummy. It's it's really like good. so good. I love it, Jill. Good. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Let's be honest. We all know where the problem is. Celine? The head chef is not acting as the head chef and watching the food come out properly. And for every crap dish they send out, it's closing that door quicker. I have seen what you have seen. I have seen some stuff which I don't like. They need a leader. They need a better leader. You're right. They need that. Without that, they can't respect us. That's the engine room in there. If that's not firing on all cylinders, we're screwed. Understand what I've said. Absolutely tomorrow, but I want each and every one of you to get ready for some major changes. With the family now all on the same page, Chef Ramsay moves ahead with a 40-year-old facelift of the freight. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Are you ready? to witness the new Lafrite. Let's do it. Celine, ladies first. Off you go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jump in. Beautiful. It's different. Wow. Look at it. Yeah, where's my yellow? <laughs> Gone is the yellow. I can't believe how bright. Oh. How much does that blue pop out now? It's beautiful. Papa, the awning's gone. My bar American is gone. My bar can be a bar now. It's not smothered with a hideous awning. We've opened it up, and it's got that modern French bistro vibe. We've got custom artwork on the wall. Look at it. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Customer. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to say, oh, my gosh, I'm in the wrong restaurant or what? <laughs> you know? It's really a fantastic change. What do you think? What do you think? Can you see the It's awesome. I think it's just beautiful. <laughs> Look at the two of you. I think it's a new beginning, and we're turning that page from the 70s to the future. This restaurant needs to be cool, hip, and trendy to compete. So the menu needs to reflect that. Wow, get down. It's a classic, modern bistro take. Good. <laughs> Okay, tonight we are relaunching La Frite. Yes. New restaurant, new menu. More importantly, a united family with a brand new attitude to put this restaurant on the map. You ready? Yes. Here's one of the most important worries on my mind. Last night there was a glaring problem. Your kitchen 
was nowhere near strong enough to relaunch this restaurant. So I made a few phone calls and I found a secret weapon. Please welcome Chef Chewy. Come here, bud. Hello, Good to everyone. see you. Hello. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> uh, are you good? Yeah, I'm happy to be here with you guys. Okay. <laughs> this man has over 15 years of experience in French bistros. Whilst I'm here, I wanted him to be over every little detail in that kitchen, teaching your brigade this menu to make sure we haven't got issues. You got another voice. Thank you. OK, let's go. We've got some prep to do. Oh. <laughs> While Chef Chewy trains Martine and the kitchen staff, <laughs> Chef Ramsay reveals the stunning new menu to the family. OK, the new menu at Lafitte. It's gorgeous. Beautiful. It smells good in here already. Let's have a little run through on the menu from the top. Something classic in French. Escargot, French nails, puff pastry croutons in there. Mince filet mignon, yeah, classic garnish. Finish with a little quail egg on the top. The entrees, coq au vin, braised chicken in red wine, Swiss chard and turnips. The jarret d'agneau, braised lamb shank, truffle polenta and Brussels sprouts. A Frenchman's dream. It's good. I, I love it. It's gorgeous. I, I'm just flabbergasted. I mean, it's beautiful. This is how it should be. This is exciting. It's a, a great menu, and, you know, I can't wait to see excellent food coming out of the kitchen. Oh, my God. I mean, they're all amazing. It's good. That's all, <laughs> That's all I know. After almost 40 years without a change, it's relaunch night at Lafrite. How are you? You'll be the first customers of the new Lafrite. And time for Chef Martine to be tested. OK, great. You all set? Yeah. Good. Chef Chewy will be there to support him and oversee the crepe station. The old Lafrite is gone. Let's go. They're a little nervous because after 20 years cooking the same food almost every day, you know, the new menu is totally different. What do we think? I have the onion soup to start, the uh, uh, braised lamb shake. I'll have the tuna de soie salad with the uh, mushroom gravy. Martine, order in. Let's go, table two. Ready to go. It's 30 minutes into service. All right, soup du jour. And appetizers are not only leaving the kitchen quickly, the is awesome. they are a hit with customers. That is great. But back in the kitchen. Martine, two soup du jours and a corn on the crepe. Martine. Trouble is brewing as a frustrated Celine. How's my corn on the crepe? tries to get answers from Martine. Martine! Communicate, please. Martine! Martine! I hear you, sir. Talk to me. I need you to start giving an answer to Celine. You need to talk. While an organized Celine tries to expedite, Martine continues to ignore. It's a bit, an hour and a half, two hours. And almost nothing is leaving the kitchen. We can't have our dinner in five minutes. We'd like a bill. OK. And we'll leave. Absolutely. So, I'll no. bring it over we'll right now. Do we have table three? It's there. It's they're doing it right now. They're okay. doing it right now? Uh-huh. Perfect. Let's go. How long for this, do you think? Because otherwise, they say they will cancel it. About five more minutes. Five more minutes. Oh, uh, yeah. Five minutes? I have five tables, all waiting an hour and a half for their entrees. And I cannot do anything. I am screaming at them right now. I, it's too late. We're leaving. Don't worry about 20. They're walking out now. 20's walking out now. And basically, it hurts me so much to watch any table walk out of here without even getting served their food. It's completely out of control. Fucking serious, man. It's relaunch night at Lafrite, and after a 90-minute wait... I am screaming at them right now. I, it's too late. We're leaving. The first table has walked out. Wow. It's unbelievable. Don't worry about 20. They're walking out now. Fucking serious, man. What's wrong? None of my tables have the fucking entrees. One of them walked out. They're done. Oh, fucking hell. Servers in the dining room. Everybody else, shut the fuck up for 30 seconds. This is really important. Celine. I need you to get a grip of the kitchen. I need you to delegate, please. I want Chewy to take control, please. Tell him that, yeah? Chewy, please take control of the kitchen. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Quattro crepes, tall dia. Let's go, guys. We should be able to do this. Come on. How's table eight working? I need, like, four or five minutes for that. Yep, perfect. What I liked about Chef Chewy is when I said something to him, he would acknowledge me and say, OK. And that's how it should be. OK, that's the poulet. Here, this. Yay. All right. With Celine and Chef Chewy now working in complete harmony. We're going to table seven, please. Thank you. Thank you. Entrees are flying out of the kitchen. Oh, okay. oh, yes. 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 And Lafrite's relaunch 
melt in your mouth. It was worth the wait. Finishes on a positive note. I have no other table, huh? I'm finished. Take a break. Thank you, guys. Great job, guys. Thank you. Ching on. Congrats on everyone. Right, um, first of all, let me make something really clear. You will not be able to move forward unless you make major changes in that kitchen. I don't know what would happen to this restaurant tonight if Chef Chewy wasn't there, let me tell you that. But Chef Chewy can't do it alone. It's true. The family's united. Now, you, as a family, have to fix the kitchen. Yeah. Gordon made us realize that we need to work together on making changes, you know, building a team that's going to continue getting this restaurant to, to the next level. And Andre, when you first came to me, you were worried about these two. I want them together. They can work together. And they, they proved it. Not to me, but to you. They are fine. And they just want to make you proud. I'm proud of them. This has been a really, really incredible experience. It's great to have made it through and to made it through a stronger person and a stronger family and, and a stronger restaurant as a whole. Thank you. Take care. Hey, take care. It was you were great. No more crepe in a casserole. No. <laughs> Promise. Thank you so much. Good night. This week, we definitely, definitely fixed the family, but I'm not too sure we actually fixed the restaurant. We've given them all the tools, but it was up to them to make the tough decisions. Sacre bleu. In the days that followed, Chef Chewy was brought in full time as the new executive chef. Just put it out, put it out. Cordon Bleu crepe, thank you very much, Chewy. And is continuing to build a strong team in the kitchen. It's okay. There you go, crispy. Bon appetit. Enjoy. Alex and Celine are working hard to continue the family legacy. So I need the frise salad and the poulet pomme. Okay? But more importantly, they are doing it together. Bye, Selena. Bye. See you, see you soon. Nestled in the middle of the up-and-coming neighborhood of Eagle Rock, California, is Capri, an Italian restaurant which is owned by the Thiel Twins. Hi, Hi. I'm Jeff. Jeff. I'm Jeff. No, I'm Jeff. You're Jim. I'm Jim. And we're, we're the, the owners, owners of, of the Capri, Capri Italian, Italian restaurant. Good evening, Capri. Jim speaking. How we got into the restaurant business was we used to come here all the time, and we loved the place. So we would said, we'll buy it. The feeling was, it's like, dude, free pizza? All right. Yeah, yeah, word, word, uh-huh, Team Capri. Twins are like two overgrown boys. <laughs> Jeffy's getting larger. <laughs> Let's play symbol. They're just kind of immature. Oh, I'll show you how you do the chicken fillet. Excuse me. They're just doing what they know, and it's not working. <laughs> Ta-da! Sorry. Are you okay? Sorry. It's OK. <laughs> Yes, everybody is entertained by their childishness. But it is a restaurant, and we're here to serve food. That looks good. Oops. You know what? These guys can't cook. We gotta figure a better way to do the lasagna. We're getting too many people saying it's overcooked. Do you think we should cook it less? The food that comes out from the kitchen looks terrible. What do you say? It wasn't cooked, it's raw. Yeah, I win them all. It's embarrassing. It looks like nobody cares. You sure you don't like raw chicken? Here, they're an issue. Jim and Jeff are lazy. All right, I'm going to the car. Wake me up when it's over. Lazy is an understatement. The twins' highest priority is doing as little work as possible. There's something that we're doing wrong, and I'm not sure what it is. But the financial situation hit the pooper. We're broke. <laughs> Oops, that pink is never a good color. I haven't paid them for a few months. We need help. If things don't change, I would say the doors will close quickly. Hello? No, the phone's not working again. Fingers crossed that Chef Ramsay's gonna help us. Italian dining since 1963. Closed since 1963. My God. Hideous. One, two. Hello. Hi there. 
How are you? Pretty good. I'm Jeff. Good to see you. Good to see you. Likewise. Uh, it looks shut from outside. Uh, yeah, we're not open yet. Are oh, you not open yet? No. When do you open? Uh, four o'clock. Dinner only? Yeah. And you're the uh, owner? Yeah. My Brilliant. brother and I are. OK, great. Would you like to meet my brother? Uh, yes, please. What's his name? Jim. Jim. And you're Jeff? Yep. Oh, my god, look at this place. OK. What do you want me to do? Just say, hey, how's it going? Okay. You won't know. It's fun to play jokes on people. In the Twin Union book, you got to mess with people. Hey, how's it going? Jeff, is your brother not available? No, I'm Jim. No, no, come on. No, I'm his brother. You're kidding me. No, I am. Seriously. I am serious. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff go and get Jim. Come on, don't listen. All right, all right. I've got Hold work on. to do. Hold on. Please. Hold on. Hold on. I'll get him. What is this, the comedy store? <laughs> Bloody hell, look at them. Are you kidding me? Come on, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Jeff and Jim. Yes. Correct. Jeez. Look at you two. <laughs> you are identical. <laughs> You're not dressing like this, especially no, today. No, no, we, we, we wear this as this is for the rest. You've even got the same sneakers on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pen there, pen there. I didn't even notice. T-shirt there, t-shirt there. I didn't notice. Bit that. of flower there, bit of flower there. Yep. Yeah. What was quite scary. Yeah, yeah. Jim. Yep. And Jeff. Yep. So who's in charge? <laughs> no. Uh, basically, I am. I worked here longer than he has. Okay. Uh, what since 1963? Come on. Oh, no, no, we no. bought it about 14 years ago. OK, so why aren't you open for lunch? The Capri's never open for lunch, which is good. I'd rather go on the computer, watch TV, play poker. The problem is, for lunch, we have to get another whole staff. Goof off, sit in the sun. <laughs> you haven't even tried it? No, I haven't. No, I'm not ready to jump into the lunch yet. OK, but you're open every day for dinner? Wednesday through Sunday. Say that again? Wednesday, Wednesday through, through Sunday. Sunday. What's wrong with Monday, Tuesday? So help me understand this. OK. Right. So you actually close longer than you open? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, thanks for updating me. I'm going to sit down and uh, eat. Please, oh, yeah. right over here. Thank you. Let me get you some water. I'll get the water. No, I'll get the water. Yeah. Jeez, seriously? Are these menus from 1963 as well? No, they're getting old. I know, we have to get... You're kidding me. But well, look at that. Is this a joke? No, it's not. You're kidding me. I can't me. believe they're, they're falling apart. You can't even read that. It's so dirty. First impressions. Wow. OK, give me five minutes to have okay. a read of the menu. OK. okay. And I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you guys later, yeah? OK. Holy crap. I don't know what Chef Ramsay expected, but it's not a shishi place. I'm not a shishi kind of guy. I'm more down to earth. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm how are you? Colleen. I'm your server today. Okay. Nice to see you, Colleen. How long have you been here? Nine and a half years. A decade. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, what was the last thing we got changed in here? Oh, this is still the same way the original owners had it. Really? The wallpaper's been up there for 35 years. Oh my God. Let's, uh, let's go through the menu. Yeah? Let's start off with um, meatball sandwich. I love meatballs. Who makes them? They come from a company that we order from. <laughs> You're kidding me. No. You can't even make a meatball? I can. <laughs> OK, let's go for the meatball sandwich. And let's go with the chicken scapella. OK. Pizza. Ooh. Let's go for the uh, Capri Colossal. You want the big one? Yeah, why not? OK. OK, I'll let you put that order in. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, what do we have to make? Chicken scarpillo, meatball sandwich, extra large colasso. He wants an extra large? Jim, get me an extra large dough. What does he want? The colasso. All righty. So it's not just the menus. Oh, dear. Bits of sauce down there. Crap. Ugh. Just disgusting. Bits of <laughs> everywhere. Let's tape on the carpet. Look at this place. When was the last time the place was cleaned? Not lately. How long has this stuff been here? 20 years. 20 years? Bloody hell. Oh, it's like it's snowing. Oh, oh my god. That's gross, no? Yes. That's, that's above people's. That's very, yes. Jim, two seconds, please. When was the last time this place was cleaned? Ah! Uh... 
Have you seen this? No, I did not. My goodness me. Who's responsible for the cleaning here? I'm responsible. I didn't do it. Have you seen the fans? I do not like to clean. I hate cleaning. To me, that's a four-letter word. So I'm about to start eating. I give that a little shake, and all of a sudden, the dust just runs down. Let me wash my hands before I start eating. What a mess. You want to microwave these meatballs, please? OK. Come on. Work with me. Jeez. Sandwich is ready. OK. A meatball yeah. sandwich. Meatball sandwich. Um... OK, and so they buy the meatballs, they defrost them, and then, has that been microwaved or...? Yes. Thank you. OK, what else do we have to make? Uh, scarpello. That's nasty. When a restaurant can't even bother to make a meatball, that's not a good sign, let me tell you that. Somebody should tell him the chicken's definitely dead. Well, not again. Okay. What's the matter with these guys? Okay. Oh my god. What in the hell is that? The Colasso pizza. Wow. I mean, it's like someone's cleared out the fridge. But look at it. It's endless. It has a little bit of everything except for anchovies. Oh, that's dreadful. OK, thank you. OK. The crap and the gunk on top of it is just hideous. He didn't like the pizza? He's not liking anything. Oops. Now we have the chicken scarapella. Oh. Wow. It looks dull. That's not right. Oof. It smells. Is that fresh? Um. Can you ask them how old the chicken is, please? Well, that was nasty. How old is the chicken? I don't know. When did we get it? Uh, I don't know. We took it out of the freezer Tell yesterday. It's 14 years old. We took it out of the freezer yesterday. It's frozen. It is not fresh because we can't afford to keep fresh meat here all the time because we don't serve that much. If he wants to donate money so I can make it fresh, no problem. But otherwise, tough. They're not open for lunch, but so far, what I've just experienced, they shouldn't be open for dinner either. He took out the freezer yesterday and doesn't. Remember when the delivery was. Excuse me. Oh, dear. Excuse me. I didn't think it was that bad. Ugh. Under the tables, it's littered with gum. Colleen. Yes? Look at that. It's everywhere. Ugh. Absolutely disgusting. Oh. How lazy some people can be. Let's go on a gumball rally. Oh, oh, God, under there, look. The size of the gum under that one. Oh, look at that one at the end. In the corner. Oh, my God, look at that one there. When was the last time the tables were clean? Not ever that I've known of underneath. They've never been cleaned underneath? No. Oh, my God. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eighteen. 19, 20 bits of gum. Every freaking table... Has gum underneath of it. Has gum underneath. We're going to get out of there. No. Don't say that. Come on, stop crying. Grow up, you You. Uh, Jim, Jeff. Coming. I'm really nervous. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm afraid of what Chef Ramsay has to say. Honestly, you seem like nice guys, but that was painful. The general feel of the place is disgusting. 
I can tell how much you don't care. You just stand there with your foot on the booth. Can you get your dirty feet off your own booths? Have a look at this. Every table is littered with stale, disgusting gum. We just, we never looked underneath the table. Didn't have the time? Busy for lunch? No. Open seven days a week? Not. The meatball sandwich? Disgusting. The chicken was turning. And then the colossal. Kate with crap. Were they canned mushrooms on top? Yeah. Canned olives? Mm hmm Soggy and tasteless. Where's the pride? I don't know. Come on, guys. It's like a joke. Find a pulse and get real. Before we open for dinner tonight, would you mind wiping the lampshades? And can somebody get under the tables and get rid of that gum? Yeah. I'm going for lunch. I'll see you later. Starving. Capri, classic Italian. What a joke. He said our food sucked. And uh, that uh, our restaurant's really filthy. I think it was that bad. After sampling the horrendous food... That's not right. ...and discovering a dining room that hasn't been cleaned in quite some time... Oh, God, under there, look. Chef Ramsay has instructed the twins to clean up the restaurant before dinner service. You do the fans. I don't want to get on a ladder. Let's get Darian in here. I have a staff to do the cleaning. That's why I'm considered the boss, and they are someone that works with me. <laughs> For me. Awesome. Get in here. Now. We don't have a lot of time. We have to turn everything over. We got an hour before we're supposed to open. After the staff takes over the cleaning of the dining room, Capri opens for dinner. Hello. Chicken start. Hello. And Chef Ramsay arrives. The door shakes. To see the twins in action. Have you ever seen a kitchen like this before? This place is littered with crap. What's that there? CO2 for the beer. Look at those shelves. I mean, that's grime. That's like 14 years of grime there. Chef Ramsay was up. Oh, there's dust here. There's this is just like, it's not that bad. What's in here, dare I? Vegetables. That's the vegetables. What's this at the bottom? Uh, that's supposed to be eggplant. What? Eggplant Parmesan. When were they cooked? Last Thursday. Last Thursday? God almighty. Look at that. Oh, feel that. Tomato sauce. Yeah, but feel it. I know, it's, we just made it today. So what's it doing in the fridge? Hold we... that. I know it's hot. Hold it. What does hot things do that are sealed that goes inside a cold fridge? The sauce goes sour. I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Can I suggest you spend five minutes sorting out your first before you start cooking, yeah? Okay. I should have known better. He's right, but he, he's just a pain in the ass about it. Darren, can you go through it real quick? Yeah. Trash. Thank you. With the rotten vegetables thrown away. I need to order wings, please. And the order's pouring in. Jim and Jeff get back to cooking. Darren, order green beans, please. Got it. And begin to send food out of the kitchen. Make sure they say a prayer before they start eating that. Hey, the chicken. I can't eat that. But the diners are less than impressed. It's so disgusting. I'm nauseous. The cut. They sent this back. They didn't like it? They said that they can't eat it. What was this? It was like a pile of mush. Okay. And a pile of mush. A pile of mush. Is anyone tasting anything? Seasoning? Tasting? Every time a dish came back, it was like losing a customer, and uh, it hurts. What was wrong with it? It's too floury and not enough sauce. It makes me feel like a loser. I do really feel like a loser right now. Jeff, you OK? Oh, I'm just frustrated. Come on, let's get it. Huh? I'm, I'm working on it. Get outside, get some fresh air. Let's go. I got this, buddy. 
What's the matter? Just, it was a failure. Just, you can't give up like that. I'm not trying to. Just, it's not going right. I need to see what I've got to work with before I can start looking at any form of change. You have to bounce back. I'm, huh? I'm working on it. I really am. Jeff, you've got to. Okay, come on. Okay. Let's go. Come on. Fuck okay. Let's go. Come okay. on. Mm. Chef Ramsey's right. You got to pull yourself together and get back in there and get through the night. How are we doing? We're doing well, sir. Thanks to Chef Ramsey's encouragement, Jeff jumps back into dinner service and tries to help his brother Jim get the kitchen back on track. Keep it up, Jim. You're doing a good job. But unfortunately, he only makes matters worse. Jim, what have we done to those? I don't know what happened to those. I, I, I really don't. You frosted them in the bag? I think they were defrosted in the bag, and I... Jeff. Yeah. The chicken tenders. What did you do to them to defrost them? I put it uh, on the steam table. You defrosted them in the steam table from frozen? Yeah. Oh, my God. Now what you're supposed to do. No. Frozen food needs to be defrosted naturally. Right. Give me the bag. Where's right. the bag? Oh, God almighty. We can't serve them. You'll kill somebody. Jim, talk to me. What am I supposed to say? It's a mistake. It's a lethal mistake. Why is it bitter? It's really bad. Is that what I ate lunchtime? Yeah. Oh, this is gross. It's gross. It's gross. It's disgusting. I've been feeling a little bit crap all afternoon. What are you two doing? I f up. I f up. Well, what do you want me to say? I want you to step up to the plate and be a man. I screwed up. You haven't told anyone yet. He was just being a jerk. He was an ass. I'm so tired of him just pushing and pushing. Grow some f and take it off the menu. I've had enough. I'm so pissed. I can only take so much before I fight back. Jim, Jim, wait. Jim. It's an hour into dinner service. Oh, God almighty. And Chef Ramsay has just discovered a lethal mistake. Spoiled chicken at Capri. You kill somebody. What am I supposed to say? Take off the menu. Jim, Jim, I don't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, due to certain circumstance, we have no chicken tonight. Oh. My apology to everyone here. If you just want to have what you're eating now and leave, I understand fully, and I apologize. Hey, there may have been a more subtle way of doing that. Get out of my way. When we canceled all our chicken orders, we got screwed. Will you stop acting like a baby? Oh, blow it out, you Excuse me? You heard it. Hey, wait a minute, need diaper changing. I'll give Isn't you that time of night? Little poo-poo in caca pants. He's the baby. He's the one that's whining over everything. I don't need to hear this crap. Jim, why do you have to behave like this? I'm not gonna get yelled at. You're walking at. around like a big baby, and I'm just asking you to grow up a little bit. Show a little bit of respect for what you're trying to cook. Oh. oh my God, you big wet noodle. Do you want a blanket and a bottle? Do you need one? Upside the head? Jim, stop oh it, please. Oh my God, what a spoiled brat. Jim, shut up, please. You're not helping the cause. Oh my God, now he's setting himself on fire. I hope so. Are they always acting up this childish? Oh, yeah. They don't get the way they cry or throw a temper tantrum. Oh, my God. To walk into the dining room like that and scream. That's why I said temper tantrum. There's a part of me that's very satisfied to see the boys finally get what they deserve. A lesson in humility. <laughs> OK, where are you at now? I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, but yeah. it's really late. Let me go check on that for you. Can I pass you this? They've been here since we opened, and they haven't got their food yet. Jim, some of the tables have been waiting two hours out there. I know. We don't even seem to be bothered. I am bothered. Yeah, there's only three tables we served at entrees. Come on, guys, just show a little bit more enthusiasm, surely. 
No, it doesn't look good. Damn it. This can't be happening. It's just like a bad nightmare. Let's drink our wine and go. Hi, Window wants to walk. Cancel window. Customers were not happy. Some got tired of waiting and left. It was very disappointing. It was a bad night. Our dishes took longer than usual. It was just an embarrassing night. OK, today could be summed up in one four-letter word. Lazy. I can't even start to help both of you when you're not helping yourselves. I really need you to do something. Both of you, go through your kitchen and clean it. Not your staff, you. Both of you. Got it? Yep. Good night. Get to work. We weren't lazy. Now we're paying for it. We're failures. Yay. I'm just making a turkey here. Can I do this? What's wrong, Jim? I can't clean anything. I'm a failure. I'm making a mess. I feel bad. We are in trouble. I really don't know if we can fix it. That's the problem. I'm not cleaning anything up. Go take a break, Jim. Uh, uh, no, I can't take a break. Because I'm too lazy as it is. No, I'm fine. I gotta clean this up. No. Gotta clean it. After the twins spend most of the night cleaning, I'm making a mess. Chef Ramsay arrives early, and with the help of longtime waitress Colleen and pizza maker Darian, he does something the twins have never done. Open for lunch. Okay, Darren. Yes, sir. It's gonna be fast. It's gonna be furious, but you can do it, okay? Yeah, I'm game for this. How you doing? You should come in and have some lunch. I would like the lasagna, please. Pizza. Pizza. Lasagna up. Lasagna. Enjoy. This is delicious. Mmm. So yeah. This is really good. Look at that. We got a sign twirler. Now open for lunch. <laughs> oh, cool. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, wow. I can't believe this is happening. Wow. This is our place? <laughs> Hi, welcome. Hi. Thanks for making it today. Thank you. Uh, take a seat. Feeling a little bit peckish? Um, yeah. Yeah? Well, let me get you a nice little uh, chopped salad. Uh, this is different. Uh, let's start off with a little oh. chopped salad. Thank you. And make sure you save some room for an Italian sausage lasagna and a very simple um, margarita pizza. Thank you. I'm sorry, excuse me. It's a good pizza. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Whilst you two were at home, nice and cosy, I got here early this morning with Darren and Colleen. I think today we put over $300 in the cash register. Wow. Yeah. $300, if you do that five times a week, that's $1,500, that's almost our rent. So it's a lot of money. Talk to me. I'm just <coughs> very happy. Yeah. I had my eyes shut and that was wrong. I sat on my butt, being lazy. You can't have your butt stuck to your bed every morning. You've got to get out and, and break the mold. Message understood loud and clear? Yep, loud and clear. After finally getting through to the twins about their laziness, Chef Ramsay wants to dig a little deeper. He has an unorthodox plan that will allow the brothers to work out their issues and their frustrations. Time to let go of the past and to embrace the future. Gloves on. I'm not gonna be fighting Chef Ramsay, am I? I want to know what's holding you back. One, two. Oh, for God's sake. What is that? Two. What is that? I don't work out. It's like starting an old car. After a year sitting there, it's going to go fart out a little bit. Come on. What pisses you off the most? What is it? Myself. Why? Huh? Because I'm lazy. When was the last time you did something 100%? 
I can't remember. What are you afraid of? Tell me. S screw it up. Damn it. It's just screw it up. I've done it all my life. I'm a failure. You're not a failure. Yes, I am. You are not. <sighs> we all make mistakes in life. <laughs> Embrace change. Are you keen to make this business work? Yeah, it's time. I'm ready to move on to make a success out of this. OK, last 10. Let's go. And again. And again. Come on. Hit it. Stop kissing it. Come on. Come on. And again. Ready to change? Yes. Good man. Yeah. Get the f out of it. I know I'm going to put behind me all the, uh, the laziness and look towards the future and the successes that are coming. Jeff, let's go. Good, good, nice. It feels good to just let out a whole bunch of that I've been hanging on to. Nice, nice, nice. Take a breather. Good. Wow. What does this restaurant mean for you? A life, a career. And you think by sitting on your lazy ass all day long and turning up halfway through the day is going to make it work? You need to commit. Okay. Good. You, in here. Let's go. I don't want any headshots, just one round. And tell each other it's time to work. Let's go. We can work together. We can work together. If we can be successful, we just got to talk to each other. Can I keep anything inside? Yeah. You know. No. Stop. Well done. Give him a hug. Boxing each other uh, was a good exercise because it, it cleared the air and it showed me that I, it's time for me to work hard for the business for both of us. OK. Good. It's time for change. Got it? Got it. Are you ready? Ready. Good. <sighs> Get cleaned up and meet me back at the restaurant. Satisfied that the twins are ready to make some changes within themselves. Okay, how are you feeling? Good. Good. Chef Ramsay now you. wants to focus on something else that needs a major change. The food. When was the last time you made a meatball? Probably five years ago. Yeah, and why did you stop? It was easier. Lazy. Oops. Let's make a meatball okay. Okay. together. It's been a long time since we made meatballs, but I'm ready to do this. I am a professional. Right. Ground beef. Season, yeah? Salt and pepper. Garlic. Handful of chili flakes. Chef Ramsay is a magician in the kitchen. Oh, you just add this and this and this, and it's just like. Jeff. Yes. How big do you like your balls? <laughs> uh, pretty good size. I mean, you know. Golf ball size? What? A little taste. What do you think? It's good. I like it a lot. Can you do that? Yes. Can you do that if it needs help? Yes. Homemade meatballs. Homemade yes. meatballs. The difference is night and day. Homemade. Homemade. Can't hear you. Homemade. homemade. Can't hear you. It's homemade meatballs. Get outside and shout in the street. Homemade meatballs. Tell them in the neighborhood. We have homemade meatballs. I can't hear you. We have homemade meatballs. Finally. Stop. We have homemade meatballs. We have Faced with a restaurant that hasn't been touched since 1963, Chef Ramsay and his team work overnight to give this restaurant one of the biggest makeovers in Kitchen Nightmares history. Right, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. You are in for a big shock. Are you ready to see the new Capri? Yes. yes. Good. On the count of three. One. Two. No peek. Three. Oh, 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 oh my God. God. Wow. Oh, my this God. This is nice. <laughs> Just have a look. We have brought the Capri from 1963, fast forward it, transformed it to 2011. It's beautiful. Look at it. Oh, cool hip. Man. This place 
is going to be hopping. This is nice. Oh, wow. Gone is the carpet that was stuck together with tape. You have the most amazing reclaimed wood lining the walls. Look at Yeah, us. that's right. We had to put it on the wall as well. Colin, yeah. what do you think? It's... Isn't it amazing? It's amazing. We got rid of those hideous green booths. You have the most amazing tailor-made cut pews as benches from your local church. Oh, wow. wow. Sit down in the pew. You're happy. Yeah. Like a piggy Yeah. yeah. It's great. Colleen, yes, come forward, darling, and bring those menus from the pocket there. Oh, I love my it. Goodness. Gone are the dirty plastic menus. <laughs> Design and what your kitchen is capable of producing. So now it's time to stop ignoring the business and run the business. Okay. Yeah? I get nervous when you don't talk. Oh, he's, huh? he's totally stunned. Come on. Just amazing. It really is. I've never heard you this quiet. I don't have anything. What's else. the matter? Just amazing. I'm in shock. I never thought I could look so different. This is beyond what I could ever think could happen. <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. We're moving up. And it's exciting. It's a second chance on life. This is going to be the coolest place in Eagle Rock now. Exactly that. Right, come through, please. Look at this. Oh, stuff. my God. Let's start off with meatballs of forno, yes? What are they? Homemade, Homemade meatballs. meatballs. Homemade meatballs. OK, salad to the table. Welcome. An Italian chopped salad. Yay! For me, the hallmark, the pizza. The margarita, classic. Eggplant, palm pie, delicious, and just gives a completely different twist. Now, entrees, baked meat lasagna, one of my favourites, yeah? Mm. Baked herb chicken with fingerling potatoes and a white wine sauce. Jim? I like it. That's Jeff. A lot. It's cool. I'm Jeff. That's Jim. Yeah. <laughs> right, little taste? Yes. Jump yes. in. All right. Oh, the broccoli is so good. The food looks unbelievable and it even tastes better. It's excellent. The eggplant is amazing. I'm starting to get full already, and I haven't tasted half the stuff. Excuse me. Welcome. Put you right over here, please. Word of Capri's relaunch has spread through Eagle Rock. We have a new menu. We have great salads and appetizers to start with. And the dining room fills up quickly, with customers eager to try the new menu. You want to do the mac and cheese? The bowl is chicken wing. I'll go grab that and come back to you. All right, let's go. There you go, Jim. Medium margarita pizza and a baked chicken. OK. And I, and I want you to call it out like a chef. OK. Owner. I got two. What is that? Hot potato skins. Two wings. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Jim? I'm nervous, but I have to believe that I am in charge and I know what I'm doing. Own it, own it, own it, own it, yeah? Come yeah. on. Gotta leave from the top, buddy. In spite of Jim's nerves... Table five is ready. Pick it up, please. Food is quickly making its way out to the diners. Not high enough. Perhaps a little too quickly. Listen, guys, guys, the chicken's not hot enough, especially inside there. Get in the oven, get the pan hot first. Jim, I think he's starting to really get a little panicky. Jim, give me time with the chicken, please. I, I, I got the, the chicken in, in the, what's in the pan and stuff. It's, it's heating up. Jim, bounce back. Yeah. It's not a race. Okay. Customers will wait for good food. Hot food out in the window. I'm dragging the meatballs. Here's spaghetti meatball. Yeah. Is that how I showed you to play a Spaghetti meatball. No. It looks like someone on my plate. Dear yeah, Jim, it's like, come on. It's so easy. Just on. And you're more capable of doing that, I'm telling you. It's not rocket science. You can't even great cheese. No, no, no. Stop panicking and yeah. focus. I'm panicking right now because we want to get food out quick. But it's like, hey, don't screw this up. It's an hour into service. Sausage. And Jim is struggling to keep up with the orders. Jim, how much longer on my table four? It's coming up right now. Unfortunately, a relaunch that had such promise. The appetizer meatballs. Did you really? I did yeah. not see that. Looks like it's slipping away. Your chicken's coming also. Jim, look at me. What table number is that for? 16 is there. And you cutting it right now? I had a mushroom and a meat lover. Got Put it right up. This is going to 16. They haven't even got their appetizers. Oh, f sake. 
God darn it. Oh, come on. Come in, you. Come in, both of you. I need you for 30 seconds out of all this Oh, man, we're doing this again? I thought we got through this. Please don't let this be the end. No, no, no. No, 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 no. That. It's relaunch night at Capri. And with the kitchen backed up. Jim, give me time with the chicken, please. The chicken in the, in the what's in the pan and stuff, it's it's heating up. And diners waiting over an hour for food. Come in, both of you. Chef Ramsay has no, no. seen enough. No. Look at me. Look at me. Right now, you're making yourselves look stupid. Right. It's a big night tonight. Yes. And you're pissing it up. Yes. So please listen to me. You have to command your kitchen. Yes. You have to work together. But it's not a race. Right. Customers are going to wait for good food. Stop panicking and yes. focus, OK? Yes. Come on. Chef Rousset was like, what the f is this? How could you? And I go, Ugh. We slip back into our old ways of doing it. And it's like, you got to change. This is a new Capri. I need an order of garlic knots and pepperoni and cheese. Yes, sir. Let's go, Helton. I'll take care of this. Got it. It's time that I grew up. It's time that I start working as a man and not as a butthead. Sausage and bean, put some cheese uh, on I this. I put these on this, right? Yeah, put a little uh, oregano. Oregano. OK, Jim, good. Now we're getting a system. Convict it, yes? Yep. What's next? On uh, 16. Good. I got hot food up here. Please serve it. Once we started hitting our rhythm, it was great, because things were going out. Excuse me. We settled down, and we got it zooming along. How are we doing? So good. The meatballs are our favorite thing okay. to eat. This is really good. It's delicious. This is made from scratch. You can tell. This is so amazing. It's been one hell of a roller coaster ride, but we've learned a lot from Chef Ramsay, and he's left us with a lot of inspiration and hope. I can see that we will make it if we keep doing what we're doing. Jim, Jeff, you've come a long way. It's been a tough journey. Yes. And in order for this place to continue functioning, you both must work at it. Yes. Don't clutter. Yes. Show up early. Yes. Lazy is a four-letter word. Yes. Good. <laughs> God bless you both. <laughs> Thank you, sir. OK? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good luck. We've went through a lot to get, uh, you know, to get the nightmare into a, a, a dream. It's yeah. still a learning process, but the future looks really good. The Capri is going to work. Good luck. <laughs> God, honestly, I'm never going to forget the twins in Eagle Rock. Let me tell you that. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Jeez. Yes. <sighs> wow, that was hard. I mean, really hard. But I now really believe that both Jim and Jeff and their little restaurant can become a huge tourist attraction here in Eagle Rock. And come on, <laughs> who doesn't love a pizza <laughs> and a show? <laughs> oh. oh. That was hard. Man. Just one month after Chef Ramsay's departure. Can I take a picture of you two with, with Jen? You oh, sure, sure can. can. The twins kept their promise and opened for lunch. It's excellent. It's really good. The new food and decor have made Capri a hot spot in Eagle Rock. Come back again. We're going to keep this going now. This has been a life changing experience. Thank you very much, Chef Ramsay, for what you did for us. I think it's going to work. It's going to work. By the way, we have homemade meatballs! Yeah!